Thank you, sir. Having the appointed time of 5.30 arrive, I would like to call the Tuesday, January 10th, 2023 Committee of a Whole to order. Would you please stand and join me for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Clark, would you please take the roll? Will do. Alderman Redpath. Here. Alderman Gregory. Here. Alderman Williams. Here. Alderman Fulgenzi. Here. Alderwoman Purchase. Here. Alderwoman DeCenso. Present. Alderman McMiniman. Here. Alderwoman Connolly. Present. Alderman Donlin. Here. Alderman Hanauer. Here. Mr. Chairman, a quorum is present. Thank you, uh, Mr. Clark. Uh, I would accept a motion for approval of the December so moved. Thank you. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Madam Treasurer, is, they, uh, is there a uh, Treasurer's report tonight? Like to vote on it. All right. All those in favor? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Ayes have it. <clears throat> now, Ms. Mrs. Treasurer, would there be a Treasurer's report tonight? Yes, Chair Gregory, we have a report for you. The corporate fund, the beginning balance in the month of December, three thousand four hundred dollars had we had total receipts in the corporate fund of ten million two hundred twenty five thousand ninety three dollars we had total disbursements of nine million eight hundred ninety five thousand four hundred four dollars which left the corporate fund with an ending balance of sixty three million three hundred thirty three thousand eighty nine dollars chair Gregory of that ending balance the ARPA fund balance American Rescue Plan Act dollars was twenty three million seventy four thousand three hundred twenty six dollars this concludes my report chair Gregory Thank you, Madam Treasurer. I really appreciate First it. First to accept the Treasurer's report as submitted, Mr. Second. Chair. It's been seconded and moved. Thank you, Mr. Donnellan. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any, any opposed? The ayes have it. Are there, uh, we did receive our OVM uh, report today. Are there any, are there any questions? Right, seeing are any questions? Uh, oh, sure. oh, I'm sorry. I'll, I remember to look at the uh, system. <laughs> Alderwoman Conley. Thank you. Um, yes, and I'm not sure who this will be directed to, but there is um, an entry in the report for exotic, exotic edible pineapple drinks for $50,000. Um, I, I thought f purchases of $50,000 came before council, so do we have someone from Op-Ed who could explain why that one didn't? If I may, if I may uh, that or was... Or we have Alderman Gregory? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I'm just... You know, <laughs> but for for that question, we did um, that. They were in the 22 um, cannabis grants that we did approve um, back in July. Um, so I wasn't aware that they had to come back. I, I, did we have an ordinance that we passed back in July? Okay, so correct. that's that's all I needed correct, to know. Correct, We'd correct. already done yes. it. Okay, yes. thank you. However, I will say that um, my question would be to be is that I, I thought they had withdrawn, but. Um, you know, it looks like things are moving. I do have some questions on cannabis, but thank you. For okay, no, thank up. you, I've, and thank you for reminding me. I'd forgotten about that. So good. Alrighty. Will there be any 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 others? All right, thank you. Uh, are there any presentations? I haven't been notified of any. No, no, Mr. Chair. All right, thank you. Next, we have the uh, ordinances <coughs> tabled and remaining in committee. Mr. Clerk, could you actually, just, Mr. Clerk, if I if I may pause in this whole council, because this is just on my mind. If if you know there was a situation in our city, and I you know I know we can't talk much about it, but if we could just take a moment of silence, you know, just let our community know that we we we, we are aware of the situation, and you know. We want to take back that information, so I just want, want to ask this council for for a second before we proceed with normal normal life that we just take a moment of, of silence and and just you know just think how precious life is. Uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Chair. What, which situation are we referring to, just in general? Um, the situation that was reported today, where a young 35 year old man, um, you know, appears to be you know murdered by by some um, people sent to help him. So you know. Rather than speak on the details of it, I just think that I, I just want to take a moment for my for myself and you know uh, for others just to. Yeah, I'm sorry, I was unaware. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate everyone. Ordinances tabled or remaining in committee 2022 384. 
2022-463. Uh, is there anyone who would like to remove any of these ordinances from committee? Right. Okay. Uh, we will now move on. That's not here. So now for the ordinances for committee consideration. CWLP 2023-001, an ordinance authorizing the execution of a 10-year Gibson sale agreement and parcel lease between the City of Springfield and Cellular Plus LLC for the sale of Jimson byproducts for the Office of Public Utilities. Move for consent. Mr. No. Chair, Mr. Chair, the utilities ask that, that one be, this one be held. Absolutely. Thank you, uh, Alderman Donnellan. I do remember that. Um, um, Chair, I, I actually have some questions for sure. the utility. I don't know if that would relate to why it's being held, but... Sure, Alderman Donnellan. Yeah, um, and Doug, I don't know if these are all questions are actually right. appropriate for you, but they would be issues that would come up for me later on with this ordinance. Um, I will say, first of all, I um, certainly very much appreciate any opportunity to divert some of our waste product from, you know, a landfill setting and, and move it into a situation where it can be reused. Um, some of these questions are related to CWLP's permits and determinations, and then some maybe for the the, um, the company. I think kind of my first question is, I don't see any information from CWLP on, on this ordinance. Is that why you're asking that we hold it for now? Uh, you have to the Corporation <laughs> Council on that. Corporation Council. It looks like the, the description of the ordinance really um, contains information from the proposed um, buyer of, of our byproduct. Yeah, so. the, the reason for the request uh, for holding it for two weeks has to do with revising the schedule, you know, the work schedule. And... Um, working through any of the questions just to make sure there's a good timeline they feel that they can comply with. So would that be part of a developer's agreement that they'll be bringing there, forward? No, th this would be, this, this is the sale, you know, of the product um, and then uh, potentially a lease agreement to allow them to uh, basically locate, co-locate near the uh, existing plant to minimize the transportation costs. Right, but when they co-locate, will they be building a new facility? They will be, yes, they will be building some, uh, you know, and I don't know all the, actually the exact detail. Part of it is modular, and then part of it is buildings, you know, that they operate inside of. So that, that um, might be so, something that would require a developer's agreement since they're asking for city funds on city property? Well, there's not, it would just be a straight lease agreement with the sale agreement, which has that uh, information in it. So it wouldn't be... Uh, again, um, there's been a whole bunch of meetings about this over the last, I don't know, eight or nine months. And so they've asked, because of the technical issues, to make sure they can actually do the project. Uh, okay. And my understanding was that they were going to be able to come in two weeks, I think is what they told us. Yes. Is, is that correct? Mm -hmm. So um, if uh, we'd be happy to try to make sure they're you know, ready to basically discuss or address the issues. Now... If you're talking about the question about CDBG funds for, for the... No, no, I haven't even gotten to that yet. <laughs> okay. I, so let me just say, so these are some of my questions. Just so, And Doug, you don't need to answer anything tonight if you want to take it back and, and, and bring answers. Um, first of all, um, I, I will disagree. This is more than just a lease agreement and a sale of our byproduct. Um, and I'm assuming this, this site schedule, which starts July of 22, that was included in our information... That's not CWLP schedule. That would be the developer's schedule. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. That, okay. That's the preliminary. So, and that does include inf that does include plans for construction of a plant, roads, modules, warehouse, mobile equipment. So, I'm I'm assuming we'll get a developer's agreement along with that construction of new new facilities on city property. We've been fairly well, consistent about asking for that. Well, we, and we can review that. That's actually part of the lease agreement. Which we didn't see yet. So I'd, I'd like to see the oh, lease under, agreement. No, I understand too. that that's all forthcoming. <coughs> I mean, no, that's I, have, I have a bunch of questions One at a time, one at a time. Auto Woman Conley has the Go ahead, I'm sorry. The thank floor. you. Uh, no, thank you, because I had a lot of questions about this. It, it, was, a, it was a little bit confusing. So, um, and, and I'm glad that we, we've got a little more time. Um, one of my concerns is, my understanding is, is that because this is a diversion of our waste stream, um, to reuse, as, as uh, 
you know, a base for a fertilizer, which again, I think is fabulous and I'd really like to see this move forward. Are we required to get a beneficial use determination on the on the, the reuse of this product or? We, we are not, no. So the, so the, 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 the person the, purchasing it? The person, they will meet, <clears throat> basically, the, the contract should have um, basically the requirement that they have to meet all Illinois EPA guidelines, you know, all regulations, environmental regulations. Air, so any permit requirements? Any permits okay. that are required from the Illinois EPA or Department of Ag or <laughs> Uh, the National <laughs> Department of Resources, anybody, you know, okay. it's, it's everybody. So it's all state agencies that they have to comply with. Okay, and that, that's good to know. I, I wasn't quite sure of that. Um, and, and then some other things kind of struck out, stood out when I was looking at the, the requested cost assistance. Um, and yes, um, Mr. Zirkel, you, yes, the CDBG or other city identified funding sources. I, I'd like a little more information about what funds would be eligible to provide that four hundred and fifty thousand um, dollars to to the developer? Just where it comes from, what the justification is for it. Um, obviously, they're also asking for an expansion of an enterprise zone to the project site. And again, since this looks to be another new construction project, I, you know whether it's separate or included with the lease agreement, I would like to see a developer's agreement. I'd like to know if. This company that will be using city land and getting city funds will then also be doing, as we've asked for every other project that comes before us, we'll be entering into PLAs, we'll be bringing us all of that information prior to us taking any votes on, on this ordinance. Um, just kind of, that's general background stuff. And then finally, I, Doug, I'm not sure what the manufacturing rates are for electrical and water usage. I, it was just literally, I don't know what that that rate is. Uh, well, we have, we don't really have that rate. Okay. Um, we've, we've got some things that we've proposed for like an industrial rate in the past, but we have never actually executed them. Um, so would this be but we do have like large rates, started? you know, okay. like rate 46 that they could fall under. Okay. For and electric anyway. Would it be okay if we could get, I, I just, and you could just shoot me an email later, but just kind of a breakdown of what those different rates are that we offer to industrial Facilities. Oh, sure, yeah. Thank you. I, I appreciate it. Um, and, and, again, and, and truthfully, I don't even know for sure what rate they qualify for because I haven't really seen anything from them as far as what their usage would be. So I, would, I could just shoot you all the rates for commercial. That would be perfect. It, it, all the know rates, that. and then I've got it for the next time I have a question from mm -hmm. somebody. Thank you very much. Alderman uh, um, uh, McMillan? Oh, I... Oh, I'm, I'm, hold I'm, on. I'm, I'm, <laughs> Alderman McConley. Um, I just want to make sure, okay... And I, uh, just if we could, prior to any final action being taken, I'd like to, again, as I mentioned, have more detailed information on what the lease of the land is, what those rates are, um, obligations, maintenance of the property, and should. I will say something out in general, um, but we have to wait for the contract, um, as Mr. Zirkel said, to be uh, brought forward. <clears throat> but essentially, we're, we're the offer per ton is way above what we're being currently offered on the market. Yes, and I saw that, and that, that's So that's, very that nice. in itself is, is uh, I think, one of the things, plus bringing jobs to the city is, mm -hmm. is why it's a pretty good project overall. Oh, and again, Doug, please know, I, I think this is fabulous. I, I, sure. Anytime no, we can I divert a waste product from a landfill into, you know, something that, that has a beneficial use that can be, you know, marketed and used, you know, in this case for, Fertilizer products. I mean, we're in a heavily agricultural state. Right. I think that's fabulous. I just there were more questions when I started reading through this, so um, just want clarification. This is in no way, shape, or form. I'm not happy. I just Understand. want clarification. <laughs> Thank you. And that's the end of my list, Sean. All right. Alderman I was going to pause sorry. for a second. Uh, yeah, yeah, you <laughs> need to with me, right? Autumn McMinn. McMinn. I've been looking at my cell phone. Why? Because it, I recall we did receive a pretty good email from Ryan McCready on this. I, I assume everyone received it. I hope you took a look at it. Uh, yeah, it was a summary of this fact uh, sheet that So that email kind of spells out uh, a lot of, of what's involved with this proposal here. And um, I also note in the email they say that um, Ryan McCready himself was planning to be here tonight together with representatives of the company, but I assume that because we're holding this, they didn't need to come. So I think many of the questions that were just posed there will be answered um, fully by um, the company officials themselves and Mr. Ryan McCready. So, um, and that'll be in two weeks, Mr. Mayor? Correct. Okay, thank you very much. 
Thank you, uh, Alderman. Um, and, and I want to ask my colleague, uh, oh, Alderman no. Williams. It, it was answered. I'm fine. Okay. Yeah, I'm fine. All righty. So I have a motion and a second to hold. Am I correct? Sure. Any, yep. any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 None opposed. Ayes have it. Mr. Clerk. Public Works, 2022-573, an ordinance authorizing a supplemental appropriation in the amount of $4,147,939 for the Office of Public Works. Move to consent. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? None opposed. Ayes have it. 2022-574, an ordinance accepting the lowest responsible bid and authorizing execution of contract number PW23-11-82 with Green Track LLC for demolition and site clearance of 66 units in Poplar Place in an amount not to exceed $1,345,370 for the Office of Public Works. Move to debate. Second. That's been motioned and second for debate. Is there any discussion? Mr. Redpath. Um, could somebody tell me, is, is this part of the agreement that we put together, Mayor, or... Um, and, and is this going to be done after they, do, after they con, conclude their, their work? Um, I think that Nate can also address this, but very quickly, you may recall there was a development agreement for right. Poplar. Um, part of the agreement uh, provided that the city would provide demolition, but then okay. the project would reimburse it to the city. Okay, that's all I need to know. Thank you. So we, we have to go through the bidding process, you know, issue the contract, but it's included in the project costs. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any other discussion? I would I would just say that, um, Nate, before we come back, me and, me and um, Alderman Williams have had um, some discussion, and we're, we're just kind of curious on how um, this particular contractor, we see he's out of Bunker Hill, and how does that relate to, um, you know, in the lines of, of what Mr. Warepath was saying as far as our minority um, agreement and, and, you know, contractors and stuff like that? So they're going to do, so essentially what I'm asking is they're going to do 66 houses or whatever, 1.3 million is, 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 are they going to have some minority participation on it under these, under this uh, development agreement? They're going to have to follow our standard, standard procedures and, and meet our goals. Which is, which is? Um, I don't have those in front of me exactly. I can verify it, you know, the percentages. Okay. Um. So, so I would, I would just quickly, you know, and, and hopefully related is listening, you know, when we come back with this, you know, when we, when we approved this and we fought to have um, a minority workforce on, on this particular project, it wasn't for, for games or nothing. We, we were serious. Um, so for me, I, I'm not going to feel comfortable. If we want to get this project done. We want safe, affordable houses over here. But at the same time, we, we, we mean what we say. And, and we're not seeing that. We're not seeing from related, uh, um, you know, mass communication. You know, we're in a time, an age where we cannot just take for granted and, and send things out to um, just the contractors we know. Um, you know, me and you have had discussions before, and you guys do a great job. You know, uh, in-house, we, we, we do our thing. Um, but our subcontractors, you know, we, we got to do better. You know, I remember I asked a question before. I said, how many subcontractors do we, do we got? And we're like, zero, big fat egg. So that's, that's on, you know, people like this, companies like this, to make sure that they're getting their minority workforce. People hear us, you know, uh, often get things confused with, 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 you know, who's responsible for what. But many times, you know, um, the people that we, that we, you know, look to have these minorities, you know, are contracting things out with, with to, to, to other folks that don't have them. So, you know, we're barking up their tree when, when, when everybody in the city has to try to get that. So we can get, get to our, get, get to our goals, get to what we want to do. Um, so I just, you know, I'm, 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 I'm adamant with that. Well, thank you. Check with purchasing. Mr. Mayor. Yep, thank you. Uh, one of the main requirements is a uh, 51% workforce coming from city residents. Uh, the other thing, if I remember correctly, the PLA uh, had certain stipulations. So I think uh, we'll have related maybe come in and give a report. But how that change was, uh, previously it was with the uh, bone training. You know, it was supposed to be from related, but there I haven't seen the PLA with regards to specifics of minority hiring, things of that nature. But that's something that they'd work with the unions. And then if the union couldn't fulfill that, um, goal, then it 
uh, goes to phone training. Correct. On the minority hiring part, that's how that was supposed to work. But on the demo, I'm not sure if that's uh, if that's separate or under that umbrella, that's why I'm not sure. Because is this the same demolition group that's doing Pillsbury, or yeah, that's this, my understanding. Yeah, so that's group. what we'll have to. You know, so that was put out for bid, and that was the lowest bidder. But we'll have to check and see what those parameters. But they, we know for sure it'd be the 51 percent uh, residents. But how? I'm and not that, sure how the PLA was written. If that covered hard. that section or not, that's what we'll have to find out. But we'll find out by the city council meeting. And, that, and, that, and that's great. I, I think we're, you're good, Nate. I'm just, you know, my final comment on it is, is that we really want to see, you know, you know, on all of our contracts, an honest effort for our contractors, whoever's getting them, to, to, to reach out to the subcontractors and try to get something. Because, you know, on this phase, there is some demo people out there. Um, I think there was another minority company that bid it on. I think he lost about $70,000 $70, or something like that. I have to go back and look. So, so you know, in my head, if, if, you know, if I'm running a company and I'm, you know, really, really, really um, geared to get minority hiring up, I'll be on the phone calling him trying to get him to 20%. You know, that, that, you know, it's not rocket science, you know, and I'm not at you. We handle our business in-house. I ask the same question, so I don't want anybody, you know, in the world to think that I don't, I don't ask uh, us first before we go out. So thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome um, to it. Alderman, Chair. Sure, Alderman Conley. And not not for you, Nate. Um, I was just going to say, Alderman Greg, I think I mean, you actually raised a really good point there, and it might be something that the council needs to look at in, in how we design our, you know, our external contracting requirements. I mean, if it's just 51% city residents, maybe there needs to be, you know, council needs to look at possibly adding a minority, you know, because we have, you know, if you're a, a local company, there's a preference, you know, you get a little bit extra credit. Maybe that's something we need to look at. Absolutely. I, um, I, I'm, I'm open to all things. I've been racking my brain on, on how, you know, we do that, but, you know, yeah, I don't it's, it's sort of a, a give, I mean, the, we do that in other things, you know, but preference for um, military and, and hiring for certain, you know, okay. so I'm just saying that might be, and I'd be certainly interested in looking at you, at it with you. Um, and then kind of bigger picture, I, I think we need to look at where our city workforce is. You know, we got that HR report and city workforce is overwhelmingly male, like 20% female, 80% male, and the racial breakdown would not let us be a contractor under this PLA. So, you know, I think we need to be looking at what the city itself can do and leading by example, especially you know, in our own personal, in our own city hiring, and then how we set up the um, sort of extra criteria for, for contracts. So, I, and I'd be happy to work with you on that. No, no, like. thank you. I appreciate it. I, you know, I just, I just know on the, you know, for our public work side and the work that they do, they, they have been doing a great job over the last, I think you said. Oh, yeah, report absolutely. I'm not criticizing. Five. I'm just saying, but overall, yeah. I mean, even at the city I get, itself, I we're get. not. I respect they're, they're, the female representation of the city is 51%, I believe. I, so. I like to hear it. It'd so be I, nice I, to see yeah. that. There we go, 52. It'd be I nice to see female workforce for the city of Springfield I totally touch agree. over 20. I totally agree in every sector of society. So let's move on, Mr. Uh, I, I just want to hop in. 18% is the goal. My man, thank you. You'll need to take a vote on this, Mr. Chairman. Yep, yep, yep. So we got a motion and a second. <clears throat> for debate. <clears throat> for debate. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 No opposed, ayes have it. 2022-575, an ordinance authorizing a supplemental appropriation in the amount of $1,345,370 for expected developer reimbursements to accommodate the demolition and site clearance of Poplar Place for the Office of Public Works. Move to debate. Second. Second. It's been moved and seconded for debate. Is there any discussion? Seeing there's no discussion, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed, ayes have it. 2022-576, an ordinance authorizing a contract with Donald W. Fox for the purchase of real estate located at 1631 East North Grand Avenue in the amount of $27,000 in closing costs in the amount of $1,500 for a total amount not to exceed $28,500 relating to the Springfield Rail Improvement Project, usable segment 6A for the Office of Public Works. Move for consent. Second. And also a motion for omnibus consideration for this ordinance which is 2020-576, 2020-577, and 
I might have said that wrong, but they're all 2022, and the last one is 578. There are three rail improvement project ordinances. Okay, so we second. have a mo motion and a second to put place five, uh, 577, 578, and 579. Am I correct? No, 576, yes, 577, seven, 578. Okay, thank you. 576, 577, and 578 on an ominous vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? None opposed? Ayes have it. 2022 577 an ordinance authorizing a contract with Hicks Properties LLC for the purchase of real estate located at 1238 East North Grand Avenue in the amount of $3,800 and closing costs in the amount of $1,000 for a total amount not to exceed $4,800 relating to the Springfield Rail Improvement Project usable segment 6A for the Office of Public Works 2022 578 an ordinance authorizing relocation expenses in the amount not to exceed $68,900 for the relocation of occupants and personal property located on parcel SR0135, 709 Barrett Street, relating to the Springfield Rail Improvement Projects for the Office of Public Works. Move for consent. Second. Been moved and seconded for consent. Any discussion? Seeing no discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? No opposed. Ayes have it. 2022-579, an ordinance accepting Lowe's responsible bid and authorizing execution of contract number PW23-11-85 with Homer Tree Service Incorporated for Firehouse 13 tree removal and clearing in the amount not to exceed $63,000 for the Office of Public Works. Move for consent. Second. second. Been moved and seconded for consent. Any discussion? Seeing no discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Ayes have it. 2022-580, an ordinance authorizing a two-year renewal of contract number PW21-20, BLH Computers Incorporated, for a collection, recycling, and disposal of electronic waste for an amount not to exceed $206,000 for the Office of Public Works. Move for consent. Second. Been moved and seconded for consent. Any discussion? Seeing no discussion, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Ayes have it. 2022-581, an ordinance authorizing a two-year renewal of contract number PW21-19 with Habitat for Humanity of Sangman County for collection, recycling, and disposal of bulky, large items for an amount not to exceed $515,000 for the Office of Public Works. Move for consent. Second. Second. Been moved and seconded for consent. Any discussion? Seeing any, no discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Ayes have it. 2022-582, an ordinance authorizing a one-year renewal of contract PW20-21 with Evans Carthage for landscape waste disposal services for an amount not to exceed $780,000 from April 1st, 2023 through March 31st, 2024 for the Office of Public Works. Move for consent. Second. Second. It's been moved and seconded for consent. Any discussion? Seeing no discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Ayes have it. 2022-583, an ordinance accepting RFP PW23-31 with the L. Pruitt Company, Petersburg Plumbing and Excavating, LLC, Perry Broughton and Trucking and Excavating Incorporated, and Rahan Brothers Incorporated, doing business as Sangamo Construction Company for cave-in repairs in an amount not to exceed $1,400,000 for the Office of Public Works. Move for consent. Second. second. And moved and seconded for consent. Any discussion? Yes. Automated nope. repair. Nick, can you tell me where's this work taking place? Where does the cave-in? Exactly. We don't know necessarily yeah. right now. I mean, it depends upon when the cave-ins occur. Oh, they're um, just lateral has, repairs. Um, and then we'll an work off of various, some of our various work orders, though, for very, some of our drainage improvements, some of our smaller drainage improvements. Is this a reoccurring contract? It is. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. All right, it's been uh, moved. Do I have a motion? I have a motion already. Consent, right All now. Right, it's been moved and seconded consent. for consent. Uh, any further discussion? Seeing no further discussion, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Ayes have it. General City Business. <laughs> Mr. Chair. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion for an omnibus vote for agenda items number 2022-584 through 587. They are all appointments. Second. It's been moved and seconded for an ominous vote from 584 to 587, correct, sir? Yes, sir. For an ominous vote, it's been moved and seconded. All in favor? Uh -huh. Aye. Any discussion? Ayes have it. 2022-584, an ordinance approving the appointment of John H. Kennedy to the Police Community Review Commission. 2022-585, an ordinance approving the appointment of Curtis J. Tomlin to the Springfield Mechanical Commission. 
2022-586, an ordinance approving the appointment of Ashley Yogaris to the Springfield Historic Sites Commission. 2022-587, an ordinance approving the appointment of Ivan Dion to the Municipal Ban Commission. Motion for debate. Second. It's been moved and seconded for debate. Any discussion? Is there any uh, of the appointees up that would like to come up and speak? Come on up. Come on up. Let's start with five. Go ahead. Come on up. Yeah, come on up. <laughs> Hello, good evening. My name is Curtis Tomlin. Um, I'm running for the mechanical board. Um, brief, brief experience. I've had, I've been doing heating and cooling for about 15 years in the community. Um, I've been a carrier rep, um, and I just purchased MB Heating and Cooling, and obtain my city mechanical license. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. Um, I just, I've grown up here, so I just want to give back to the community what it's gave to me. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Council. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next. I like that hair, dog. I like that. <laughs> Good evening, Mayor and Council. Um, my name is Evan Dion. I am looking to join the Municipal Band Commission. Uh, brief history, I've been in music pretty much my whole life, always had a passion for it. Loved it, played instruments growing up. More recently, I'm acting, acting in the capacity of an artist manager. I've got a couple of musicians through, from all the way down to Miami, Florida, up to, you know, in the area of Canada. Um, so what I'd like to bring to Springfield is just, you know, kind of a young perspective or a new perspective. Um, That's not right. to necessarily change anything, <laughs> but, you know, just to kind of add that and, you know, what maybe the young people are looking for, so you know, pleasant. to sing. So uh, hopefully, you know, I, we go ahead and move forward with this, and I'd love to see what I could bring to Springfield. Thank you again, Mayor. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Us young people are always looking for something new. That's right. That's right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> what are you laughing at? Yeah. Well, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening, Mr. Mayor and Council Members. My name is John Kennedy, and uh, I wanted to just share with you a little bit about my background. I've been in public safety my entire career. Um, I've been an advocate um, in Illinois and nationally. I uh, was with the National Safety Council for 30 years, and as uh, Group Vice President of Education and uh, Programs, I was the lead spokesperson on all our traffic safety issues. Um, at my 30th year anniversary, I, I left and I became the executive director of Illinois Association of Chiefs of Police, where I stayed for three years until I was offered a position with the FBI National Academy Associates, and I split my time between Springfield and Quantico. I did retire on December 7th, um, but I've been asked to stay on a contractual basis to uh, finish up an IT project and be a publisher of our magazine. So my interest in this position is I served on the St. Charles uh, Illinois uh, Board of Fire and Commissioners for six years. I'm a resident of Ward 10, and I'm hoping to get more involved in uh, community safety, public safety in our in our city here. So, thank you for this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Mayor and Council <laughs> Councilman. Um, my name is Ashley Yogers. I currently live in Ward 6 of Springfield. Um, I have a background in natural resource management and outdoor recreation. For the past 10 years, I worked in grant management um, for and with nonprofits and in higher education institutes. Um, most recently, upon moving back to Springfield three years ago, I've been volunteering as a historical interpreter at Lincoln's New Salem, and I've also newly been voted on the Illinois State Museum Society Board. Um, so I'm really excited about the opportunity to work on the Historic Sites Commission. It's been a lifelong interest of mine, so I hope I can bring something to it. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, anyone else? Anyone else? All right. It's been moved and seconded for debate. All in favor? Aye. All right. Any opposed? Ayes have it. 2022-588, an ordinance authorizing acceptance of proposal execution of an agreement for the sale of city-owned property consisting of one's parcel for the amount of $500 for the Office of Budget and Management. Motion for consent. Second. We move and second for consent. Any discussion? Seeing any, no discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Ayes have it. 
2022-589, an ordinance authorizing acceptance of proposals and execution of agreements for sale of city-owned property consisting of two parcels for a collective amount of $1,200 for the Office of Budget and Management. Move for consent. Second. It's been moved and seconded for consent. Any discussion? Seeing no discussion, all in favor? Aye. Aye. None opposed. Ayes have it. 2022-590, an ordinance authorizing a 10-year renewal memorandum Memorandum of an understanding with the State of Illinois Department of Natural Resources for space located at one Old State Capitol Plaza known as the Lincoln Herndon Law Office to be used for the Tourist Visitor Center for an amount not to exceed $20,000 annually for the Springfield Convention and Visitors Bureau. Mr. Motion Chair, there's purpose. been a request by the department to hold this ordinance. Thank I'd like you. Like to make that motion? Yeah. Do I have a second on the motion? To hold? Second. It's been moved and seconded for a hold. Any discussion? Seeing there's no discussion, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Not opposed, ayes have it. 2022-591, an ordinance accepting RFP PW23-20 and authorizing the purchase of trash and recycling receptacles for downtown beautification from Victor Stanley Incorporated in an amount not to exceed $251,282 and authorizing a transfer budget authority in the amount of $171,282 from Springfield Convention and Visitors Bureau budget Expenditure line 021-114-VIST-ARPG-1232 into budget expenditure line 021-114-VIST-ARPG-1416 for the Springfield Convention and Visitors Bureau. Motion Move for, for debate. Motion second to debate. Any discussion? Yeah, I, I've got a question. I'm sorry. Uh, Audubon hand hour. Trying to hit my button and do it. I'm used to the old school way. So um, Audubon hand hour. So we're, this is this is um, ARP money, right? Yes. It is ARP, and we're spending two hundred fifty thousand dollars for garbage cans. Seriously, two hundred fifty thousand for garbage cans? They're good cans. They're pretty. They better be dang good cans. Yeah, Scott Doll needs to come up. Beautiful. I yeah, mean, they're the, they're the same as our, our benches that we have. They match them. They're a little bit heavier duty. Um, they last. Um, obviously, sometimes they get beat up, and uh, you know they're out. How many in the are we quite talking? a bit. And what's that? How many are we talking? How many are we purchasing? I believe there is sixty six each, or about sixty eight each, I believe, um, um, of of both. What the cans, the waste cans, as well as the recycling cans, so 120 some or so approximately. 120 cans? Correct. I think they're about for a, for a hunt. Wait a minute here. We're spending over $1,000 per garbage can? They're concrete, aren't they? Yep, there was an RFP that was put out, and they're a little bit heavier duty for cans. They're 970, 980. Uh, you know, I, look, I'm, I'm all for that and for, for you know, having places where people can put garbage, but you know, the ARP, ARP money, I thought we were going to try to use it more for, um, you know, uh, trying to, I don't know, more projects that were, that we need, we were behind on, not on garbage cans and, you know, some of this other stuff. We're going to, we're going to, we're going to look around and this money is going to be gone. And we're not going to have it. We'll have garbage cans apparently to show for it. You know, I mean, we might as well light it and put put a fireworks show together. I just, I feel like, I don't know. That's a lot of money for garbage cans. Uh, Alderman, I, listen, I, I do not disagree, but we have to understand that these, you know, we haven't purchased garbage cans at least, or and these are uh, not only a garbage but recycling receptacles. At least 20 years, and so we got to think 20 years down the road. That's what we're doing now. Uh, you coordinate those with your benches uh, as well, and you know we're looking at the long term, playing the long game here uh, as well. And this are ARPA money that's coming out of the CVB's allocation. So we re reworked some of those initiatives that we had to get these done. Uh, I think this is the time to do it. But Scott, come on, a thousand dollar garbage cans, come on. I, listen, they're expensive. And 20 years worth? There was an RFP that was put out. We'll lose, we'll lose more garbage cans in 20 years than what we put out. I think if you go cheaper, you will. 
I, I bet you we do on these. I don't think so. These are they're really heavy duty. Ottoman Williams. <laughs> so what's wrong with the garbage cans that are there now, that are out there right now? They are just yeah. outdated. If you take a look, and I should have brought some photos of them. <clears throat> I mean, they're, they're horrible. <laughs> Thank you, older woman. Um, none of the latches work. Uh, the condition are deplorable at this point. And, you know, we have uh, over a million visitors coming a year, and this is, you know, what they're looking at. They're trying to use the garbage cans. Most of them don't work. Either the flaps don't work. Uh, these are more rounded. They're heavy-duty metal. You don't have to worry about uh, the doors, having doors on them, or those flap containers. Um, this really advances this. I know it's a lot of money. I understand that. But we're talking two decades here. Okay. So, so two decades ago, the garbage cans we got now, are they new, old, or been around for years? Is that why they're in the condition they're in? Correct. About 20 years is and the so estimation. so you're upgrading your uh, garbage cans to match. And I asked this, Scott, only because... So I get, I get it. I get the trees. I get the, the whole beautification downtown. But I also get people who are living in conditions that, that look at this stuff, and, and then they hit me with this stuff. And, and then they're going to hear now that we're spending $1,000 per can. I have to be ready to explain that now I know because the garbage cans we got are old. I mean, I'm kind of with the... Uh, uh, Alderman Hanauer, that's a little expensive for a can. and uh, fourteen each. Huh? $2,614 each if you go based on at least my simple math is that way. So so, so my whole point is uh, it's not that I'm against anything about making downtown look great, but we, no, we do neither. have to kind of have a limit on uh, something like this, I think, on how far we go as far as expense. I know we wanted to match the bench and, and you know, all that stuff, but I can show you a whole lot of stuff that this kind of money – could be spent on over there on my side of town uh, for beautification. Thank you. Ottoman McMiniman. This does seem like a lot of money, but um, I think the what we have down, and let's not call them cans, they're really... Um, Receptacles. Say it again? Receptacles. Golden <laughs> thrones yeah. is more like it. No. Jeez, it kind of buckets. Wow. denigrates what they are, but you know, we're the capital city and we're, we're, we're the capital city. We're trying to uh, beautify downtown with um, these are kind of probably architecturally, you know, um, compatible with the, the capital of Illinois. Um, this was bid out, by the way. You know, this was in our sheets. We showed that there were one, two, three, four bidders on this. And the, the price does include uh, delivery and uh, transportation, it looks like. And... Um, you know, these are, these are rated based on uh, durability evaluation and uh, so forth. I, I think the, what we got, we got double cans, let's not call them cans, we got double receptacles out there now, which one size for waste, one size for recycling. Those go back to Hacera. And why do I remember that? Because I think I was working with downtown Springfield, Inc. then, and that was a big initiative of DSI back then to try to replace the, what we had back then. And are you saying these are in combination with benches? Well, they coordinate with the current benches. From, so from an aesthetic standpoint, uh, they'll aesthetically be obviously pleasing to, you know, to view. But also the volume. Uh, our current receptacles, just they don't handle the volume, especially uh, on the recycling side. They're just not large enough. And so these are much larger, will have much more volume uh, to them, and obviously be very, very durable. So that's, that's the reason we you know, went this direction, along with the RFP and, and, the, and the lowest bidder as well. So that saves on labor, correct, if we don't have also to? Also hinge and lock, and uh, it's easier for our crews that um, clean them on a daily basis to access as well. Ottoman Redpath. You know, this is the capital city, and our downtown has looked like crap for years, and now we're starting to beautify it with some trees and and benches and, and, and trash cans. We need to do this. This ARPA money can only be spent for certain areas. So I'm, I'm telling you, we need to start spending this money to, to do this kind of stuff. $2,000 for a can, it's a little high, but I, I, can, I feel good about the, the purchase. I really think it's important that we send a message. You go to some other towns like Bloomington or, or Champaign or something, their, their downtown looks good. Our, our downtown needs to look the best, and I, I support 
This ARPA money, is, it's been set in too long. Let's spend it. And you know what? We need to start looking at the downtown sewers too with that money. Because, yep. you know, that's another area that we, we, we're, we need to use that money for. So I support it. Alderwoman Purchase. Well, Alderman Rip half took the words right out of my mouth. Well, I was going to advocate for the same thing. Great minds think alike. <laughs> um, also, too, <laughs> can you uh, maybe bring us some photos? Because I know people are going to ask about $2,000 cans after tonight and show just the difference between what it looks like. Now, I know what it looks like. It looks terrible. Yeah, bad. Um, but then show us what the new ones would look like, too, just so people who watch us every Tuesday, they can see this now, too. I, we want to make sure the golden throne looks good. I'll send that out. They're not Thank thrones. You. Thank you. That's what he called it. We don't want people sitting on them, <laughs> no. right? We're doing anything. Ottoman Donovan. In them. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair, not to belabor all the trash talk. <laughs> oh. <laughs> At least yeah. I can't go strong without that pun. Hey. That's all I but, have to uh, say. Someone cut his mic. <laughs> all sincerity, I was going to ask if we could see a picture, but you know, I travel a lot in, within the state, mostly within the state, and you know, it's sad when communities like Uptown Normal and Normal, Illinois, uh, they, they're, they're, you notice things like that, and you ask when you go to these areas and the way they've designed their downtown and, and for beautification and, and all these things do go hand in hand, and I wouldn't consider it as a spending the money, Alderman Redpath, I, I know what you mean, uh, it's investing the money. Uh, I think we agree with that. Um, but the, the cost is high, but I, I do want to say this also. There, we have projects throughout the city that are important, no question, and uh, uh, we all are advocating for our wards, but the downtown is the heart of our community, it just is, and the, the, the not only for tourism but for, for business, and hopefully uh, more and more business uh, and residential. Um, but what I'd like to see also is, uh, you know, there's projects, there's infrastructure projects. And the mayor and I have talked about one in particular out of my ward, and uh, where people turn on their faucets and basically sludge and mud comes out. That's unacceptable. That's the kind of thing. That's a, that to me. That's the number one priority for ARPA money. Projects like that. So I'm hoping that when we get to the budget talks with CWLP, we're going to talk about specifically that one, and I'm sure there's others in your wards, but uh, I, I would like to see, as Alderman, Alderman Woman, excuse me, purchase uh, requested an image of what it is, and uh, let's have further discussion on it. So, and, uh, but these things do go hand in hand. Beautification is important. Thank you. I just had one more thing. Alderman Woman purchase. Um, Scott, you did say that this came out of your, your budget, Yes, correct. So the ARPA dollars that you already approved through the FY23 budget, this is part of those. They were just redirected in the initiatives. So we had this as part of the red carpet rollout, the beautification part of it. They weren't specifically for receptacles, okay. uh, but we redirected that because we, we have to put the emphasis on that. And you understand what I'm talking about uh, when you look downtown. Can you also just, you could share it with me, but I would like to share it with my colleagues too. But how did you rework it? What did you have to take away from your budget to make this happen? Primarily it was for uh, Route 66 initiatives that I initially put in there with ARPA. The reason for that is because uh, not only did we receive $1.1 million from the initial uh, DCEO Route 66 grant, but there's a round two of that Route 66 grant that we were not necessarily expecting uh, that we'll, we'll be applying for this month. And so I, fe I felt that from that, uh, those monies, because the additional Route 66 grant monies would be available, and I anticipate receiving some of those grant dollars, that we could redirect the, the money that we had in the ARPA initiatives towards the receptacles. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. And, um, Thank you very much. I, it, I'm, I'm done too, Scott, but I just don't want to belabor the subject. I'm losing my voice. Belabor the subject, but um, I, I want to say too that this is our jewel of Springfield. And when we go to these other towns, I know we laugh about me asking about hanging baskets and stuff, but we have a lot of momentum going on right now. We got UIS coming down there. We got other entities talking about it. And I get tired of picking the weeds myself sometimes off the sidewalks. So we do have to amplify that area. And like you said, it's not just Ward 5. This is something that everybody comes to. It's, the cent it's centrally located that brings everybody together. You know, like those are seventeen hundred and ninety dollars. <laughs> so bad math. Bad math. Thanks, Nate. What did he say? Huh? Seventeen hundred. Well, shoot, if oh, I forget thanks. what I said, then. 
So I, I'll just say, I'll just say, you know, in, in all seriousness, though, I, I, I do agree with what was said here tonight on 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 various. You know, I I think seventeen hundred dollars for some trash cans is ridiculous. I think we have some very very more important things to do with American Rescue Funds, even downtown. There is some other things that will make downtown look uh, good. There's some um, facade things. I know I met with Kayla. Um, um, this costs more than the hundred thousand dollars that we did, to, you know, so they can get water hookups to the to their um, 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 businesses. I just don't think that this is a smart way to spend American Rescue funds. Um, I, I would be concerned that only a portion of downtown, or, or what's deemed downtown, what is downtown? Does downtown go across Capitol Street by by the governor's mansion? Does downtown street go to Capitol? I mean, uh, South Grand, and and you know we. So, so when we say that, I agree. Downtown is a uh, economic engine, and it should be nice. And I don't think our downtown is just looks terrible. But we have some other things that we can do: hanging baskets, and all of those things are cute. But we got to get the businesses down there. We got to get the 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 um, um, activity and drive down there. I think that that is, you know, I understand uh, Director Dow's explanation that, you know. Um, they had extra money left over, and they got a grand, and so we're going to take that money from trying to um, continue to drive Route 66, the initiative and the experience here in Springfield that drives more money and more revenue for some $1,700 trash cans. South Town won't trash cans. We ain't going to get $1,700. Dollar trash cans. Like, we really have some serious, serious things. We haven't spent, I agree, we do need to spend the American Rescue Funds, and we do need to spend it on some other things. We need to spend it on some workforce development. We haven't done that. We barely touch housing, but we're going to spend it on $1,700 on some trash cans. That's, I'm not voting for that. That's crazy. We can find something cheaper and do, and we can do, do something better than that to, to uh, make our downtown go, in my opinion. So, thank you. Mr. Um, Chair, you have uh, a motion from Alderman from Ward 10, Ralph Hanauer. Who was your second? I second. Thank you. Mr. Um, Alderman Hanauer. Yeah, I, I don't want anybody to think I'm not against beautifying downtown because that's not, that's not true. But, you know, the, the, that's a, my, my concern was the amount of money for trash cans. And, and I realize we got the things that go over the trash cans that, that hide them and all that, but um, I kind of, I, I just, I feel like it's, it's just you a okay? lot of money. <coughs> all right, John. I'm not dying yet. Okay. <laughs> that's, that's good. That's good. Um, but but I, I do think that, you know, just just for all the directors out there, just because you have extra money don't mean you got to spend it, especially the ARPA money. We can we can find other other things that we can do with it. And, you know, if this is a case where we can there was a way to get it, the price the price down with have something nice over it, have plastic, you know, the, the, the nice rubber made garbage cans underneath or whatever. It, it, if I told my wife I was going to buy a $1,700 garbage can, I think any of us, we'd, we'd get in trouble if we told our spouse that. And, well, and yeah. my taxpayer, my, my residents, you know, I'm, I'm sure they got some pretty expensive garbage cans, but none of them got $1,700 garbage cans. Well, I'm single. I can buy what I want. <laughs> Your son would get mad at you for that. No, he would any, not. Any, any further discussion on the topic at hand? All right, it's been moved and seconded for debate. All in favor? Aye. Aye. None opposed. Ayes have it. <clears throat> 2022, 592, an ordinance authorizing an agreement with Cone Incorporated to replace two <laughs> existing public elevators in an amount not to exceed $497,986 for the Lincoln Library. Motion for consent. Second. Second. And moved and consented for, uh, moved and seconded for consent. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 None opposed. Uh, ayes have it. 2022, 593, an ordinance creating a PACE area and establishing the Illinois Finance Authority property assessed clean energy program for record owners of property that from time to time may voluntarily request the levy of special assessments to secure the financing or refinancing of their PACE projects, authorizing program administrators to act thereunder, des designating the Illinois Finance Authority as the sole issuer of bonds and notes and approving related matters. Move to consent. Second. 
questions? It's been moved and seconded for consent. This is all been done. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Can we just get a map of the proposed pace area? Absolutely. Yes. Thank Could, you. If I might, the uh, you may recall that the council had approved. There was an original ordinance, and then uh, working with the Illinois Finance Authority for the Illinois building and PNC building downtown, yep. they have uh, established a plan um, using uh, a slight uh, uh, revision, and, and they're going to be here at the council meeting to kind of talk through this. But this uh, is designed to right. encompass uh, the entire city. Wow. So this would allow anyone to take advantage, for example, Washington Street Apartments. Right, yeah, we'll talk about that. And I knew you were going to say that, so Thank I hope you, you didn't mind. <laughs> um, and they'll be here to talk about it, but remember, this is not city money. This is just a financing mechanism, and the reason that it's important to work with the uh, Illinois Finance Authority is they actually have the uh, people to sell the bonds to. So they're on the other side of the providing the investors who would buy the bonds for the projects. And the, um, the um, Illinois Finance Authority, I think executive director and the other gentleman who was here before couldn't come tonight, but they'll come to the council meeting and, you know, talk about it uh, next week. Wonderful. Thank you. Uh, this is for the entire city. Yes, thank you. And what the, the reason that they're advocating this and they're working with several cities on this is because it keeps you from having to do it ordinance by ordinance. In other words, starting script from scratch from each one. So, and they'll, they'll talk about it. <coughs> Thank you. How do women purchase? Thank you. I guess this is a question for Corporation Council too. Will once they start this process and multiple entities start utilizing it, will we begin maybe a quarterly report or an update of what's going on, or is that oh, something certainly. to ask yeah. them next week? <clears throat> um, I think you could ask them those questions, but yes. Uh, they they have their the, the reason that this is an advantage to the city is these things are pretty complicated They actually are set up to do exactly this and I know that they're you can ask them next week I think they said that they were working with three or four other cities now I think Hinsdale and some of the others that they were talking to uh, And this is a way to streamline the process But an applicant still has to business still has to apply qualify, you know go through the normal uh, process to make an application Can you ask them for next week too to bring some of the maybe success stories of what they've sure. been doing already to show us how the process works completely Yes, and if you I think if you go to their website, it talks quite a bit about this mm -hmm. about the, about their pace uh, projects So if you'd like to put it on debate, I mean the, the, they'll be here That was actually gonna be my question chair was that we move this to debate so we can have Conversation with the representatives. Do we got a second? We got a, uh, it's been uh, moved to second for debate. Any other discussion? Uh, Auto woman Conway. That was it. All right. We're good. Thank all you. right. So it's been moved to second for debate. Seeing there's no discussion, all in favor? Aye. 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 No opposed. Eyes have. 2023 002, a resolution fixing a time and place for a public hearing on the Arondack tax increment financing redevelopment plan and project for the Office of Planning and Economic Development. Motion for consent. Second. Pardon. It's been moved and seconded for consent. Is there any discussion? Yes. So, Alderman Williams. Somebody explain Pardon. the hearing to me. Is it like the little hearings that we stop hearing, unstop, or is it set up somewhere Separate. in the public where people come to? Or, or they come down here <clears> on a... And do it here, maybe, mm -hmm. but separate from city council is what I'm asking. The, <clears throat> that's correct. The, this resolution just sets the time and date for the public hearing to talk about the project. But this is a uh, pro, pro forma thing to do because eventually the TIF ordinance has to come back to the council. So this is just one of the steps you have to go through in order to consider eventually creating the TIF. I think it's March 6th if my... Memory One serves. In the afternoon. Pardon? One o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah. And that would be consistent like when we've done the others where I think it's in the council chambers, I yes. believe. Okay, I couldn't remember for sure. Okay. All right, thank, thank you. you. All right, it's been booed and seconded for consent. Is there any other oh, I don't want to I'm sorry. Thank you. Um, I would encourage all of the council members to attend. Uh, anyone who can. It's interesting, you know. <coughs> Just because we think this is a, a great idea and we like it, there will be community members that come out and speak in opposition. 
So it's good to hear both sides of the story before you cast your vote. Um, the last time we had one of these, I did that. I came to the, the public hearing, and I, I just think it's very helpful for everyone and gives you a better perspective. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, any other discussion? It's been moved and seconded for consent. <clears throat> All in favor? Aye. 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 Seeing none opposed, the ayes have it. Is there any unfinished business that be, needs to come before this committee? Out of the hand hour. Thank you. Um, I saw, so we got our budget schedule, and um, I thought, uh, I, and maybe I'm getting old and can't remember, but I thought a couple years ago we voiced concern about having um, budget hearings on the night after a council meeting. Um, we, we got caught one year for people that ha weren't here. We got caught one year. It was, it was what, 10, 30, 11 o'clock before we got out of here. It was excruciating. And, and, you know, we, it seems like whenever we do that, our council meetings end up running long. We have, you know, there's, we have presentations, whatever. I'm just concerned that we're getting back into that uh, situation, and to me, I mean, I'll I'll obviously be here, but regardless. But I I thought that we did not want that, and I thought we voiced that at the time, after after that time. <coughs> I agree. I'll, I'll, I'll throw it out to Mr. McCarty. Uh, uh, Alderman, which which date in particular you you said the 31st. night after a council meeting? There's one. I I, I don't have the dates 31st. in front of me, Bill. Yeah, Sorry. 31st. Well, we have one the night we have the, we have one a couple scheduled after the committee meeting on the 31st, and then That's the meeting. next is one it? is not until Thursday. We we don't have one the day after. Well, it's, but no, he's talking about after a council meeting. Or after the same day. Same, same day. Council meeting. same day. Hey. The same day. Of, yeah. We can change it if you want, but I know we've done them in the past, and I honestly, I don't think we, we recollect that, but we can easily change it. I, I, I'd I, asked him, I think, today. I'll leave it up to, the, to my fellow council members, but I just know in the past, we, we had one night that was, and I, I, I can't remember, it was CWLP or whatever. It right. lasted forever. And I, we, I mean, at the end, we were all, n nothing good was being done. Certainly. Because we're so tired, you know. Well, the, the calendar is in draft form, as you know, and I had actually reached out to Tim today to see if there were any concerns because we hadn't heard anything back, any feedback. Um, but if the council wishes to change it, we, we're happy to do it. It's no problem at all. You just need to let us know, and that way we can get everything finalized. But I don't, I don't think it's an issue if you all want to change it. I would like to. Right now you have CWLP <laughs> and OPED scheduled for after the committee meeting on the 31st. I, I, Ottoman Donald. Rather change it to that that Wednesday. That next Wednesday is open. If you'd rather move it to that, that's fine. The, the first before 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 we Ottoman Donald ask your questions and then, uh, then we'll come. Mine up. is budget related, but not calendar calendar related. So okay. if you'd like me to go forward now, I can. No, we'll, so we'll come back to you, Ottoman McMinnis. Our, our Alder Woman Conley, I apologize. Thank you. I, mine is calendar related. I I also remember Alderman Hanauer that we expressed that. Um, need to not have double meetings. I don't know what's going to be on the committee, the whole agenda, so I would definitely be in favor of moving to another night. That would you uh, like us to move it to that, to that Wednesday? The what would that be? The first think Wednesday. One second before we answer that, Alderman McMiniman. Yeah, I was just going to um, ask whether that was the idea to move it to the next night, Wednesday, That's the fine. first. Okay. And. Uh, and and thank you, Mr. McCarty, uh, for getting us this proposed schedule uh, last week and giving us all a chance to um, communicate our, our concerns. Um, and I, you say you didn't hear any concerns till tonight? Uh, not as of, not until now, no. Okay. Well, actually, I raised concerns about, we were initially told that our first meeting would be on the 23rd, and then that was, a ward meeting took that place. So we're starting later. The first right. meeting is on the 24th, yes, Alderwoman. Yes, so there's also a meeting on the, but we don't have a meeting that night. There's no, no, that's a five Tuesday month. Yep. So that Alderman is a Han free evening. Alderman Hanauer. Yeah, thank you, thank you, Chair. Um, one of the things to keep in mind on the CWLP budget is that's a, 
that's that's like a whole nother corporate budget in itself because they've got everything and it it takes a lot more time and and I think that that's uh, I'm I'm in favor of moving it to you said to the first yeah, the Wednesday first, the first we, we had the day after open that's just fine. in case somebody right. wanted to move them so yeah we certainly can do that if that's the council's wishes it won't be a problem at all um, and actually if if it's possible could we consider maybe moving the meeting on the 24th to the 23rd would, would people have an issue with that I have a there's a ward meeting. 23rd, 23rd. there's a ward oh, meeting. Oh, right, no, that's my their ward that's meeting. my ward week meeting. Let's have that, let's have that <laughs> at LRS, you want to guys. Move it, woman. <laughs> um, I'm just concerned. I have a work conflict on the 24th, so. Um. We'll work it out and send it out, uh, budget director and uh, Alderman Donnell. Yeah, thank you. You know, uh, historically, the last few years, uh, I've noticed that the budget uh, presentations by the departments has be have become and it's, it's great and fine and dandy, but have become sort of a let's look at everything we've done the last year and really we should, I th just as a suggestion, I think we should be focusing on what's in the budget and what we are going to do and prospectively. And I think that will uh, get us to focus on what we need and asking the questions that are relevant to the budget itself. Uh, we've had, the mayor's been good about over the last few months having departments come in and give presentations about what's going on. So maybe we've already had those things and we can urge the directors to focus on what's in the budget, what are the changes, uh, and we could, you know, get right down to the heart of the matter, which is passing a budget, no, a balanced I, budget. I think that's a good idea, but I, I do think a brief overview, you know, a quick one. I, I do agree we don't need to go over everything, but it's just a brief overview of, of, of you know, what those departments has accomplished uh, would would serve a purpose as well. Alderman Conley, uh, okay, we're good. They, they removed you, all right. Uh, is there any other unfinished business? I, I will say one second, Mayor, <laughs> if, if you don't mind. Mm -hmm. I would I would just like to, um, <coughs> you know, speak briefly on, the, on the, and I'm not gonna belabor the point, uh, but you know, I, I really wanna speak on our, our, on our cannabis grants. I know that uh, we have worked hard and, and I give kudos to our economic development team that went through some um, changes and, and you know put a lot on them with, with different programs so they do a great job but I think that you know we still have some some kinks to work out between not only them but all of our departments who are involved to to disperse this money to to the people you know that this was a grant so I my question for corporation council is when we when we drafted this ordinance for cannabis business grants we put no language in for reimbursement. We worked out, I, from my recollection, that we worked out a, a system or, or, or um, development agreements that would hold each particular project to a certain uh, set of standards for a certain amount of time that is correct. Um, to, to, to uh, fulfill the grant. Um, I, I continue to reiterate What's the point of us granting somebody a $40,000 grant to do something to their business and they don't have $40,000 to put up front? They're never going to get it done. So it's a grant. It is cannabis money. It is an extra revenue that we said as a city that we're going to put towards the community, heard about a war on drugs and, and trying to, you know, stay to the state law. And, and, and we... You know, I get call after call after call, you know, this person in the department is telling them this, this person is telling them that, and I'm, I'm confused on, on how anybody can change the ordinance that we set up here today. And, 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 and it goes off any other rules. So is there anything preventing in, in our city code on, on, on grants, and when we do something like this, that when the people fulfill turning in the invoices or whatever it is that their development agreement is that we ha that they have to be reimbursed. I'm not talking about TIF. I'm not um, talking about any of these. I'm talking about a grant that we crafted from extra revenue that's supposed to be going to the community is, is determined for. And and you don't have to answer it now, but can you please look into it? And 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 we need to finish this thing out because in February we're going to open it up again. Because that was our promise to the people. That's, that's what we drew up. That's what we did um, to that. So, I, you know, I want to get these done. I don't want to have people uh, lingering over, and, and, and we haven't gotten, gotten those out. And, you know, this is not about the mayor. This is not about, you know, any of this. This is about 
us working together because I, I you know, people out here they, they they think it's politics involved. We got people. I don't care. I just want to get the stinking money out to the people who applied and qualified for it. They put in time and effort, put in applications. This is how the process went. For anybody who doesn't want to just give somebody some money, they had to put in an application, one. Then they had to draw out this business plan, be graded by Ravi and, and all the uh, people in the economic thing, come up with a grade. They were scored. There were 69 of them. We found a way, thankful to the mayor, to twist and turn with the money to use, you know, uh, uh, two years, because we was two years late in getting it from developing the program. So we go 22 grants, some 5000 some 40000 Nobody got the, the max grant of $100,000 because we wanted to get more people instead of giving three businesses $100,000. And then we, we, we you know, I got to deal with that. So, so we tried to be very, very creative, to put TIFF with it to really – you know, make a big splash with it. And, you know, it has not been a good experience for, for some of, of our constituents, you know. And, and, and that's not how we designed it to be. We designed it for, for it to be, um, especially businesses like Clay's Barbecue and, and some of these longstanding businesses. These are trusted members of my community. They ain't going to steal nothing. And we have a put in a process to deal with it, just like anything else. If, 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 if this is not, they'll never get, a, you know, money again from the city. They'll owe the city, you know. So, so in some regard, you know, we'll, we'll handle it. They have that in those degrees. So I, I, I really, 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 you know, have been patient. I've, I've, I've taken the calls. I've, 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 I've did these, you know, emails in, in the back and, you know, stuff like that, trying to really, really come out to this. And I'm telling you guys, all of our departments, economic development, our treasury and our budget department. We have got to get it together with 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 this system. You know what I'm saying, Director? Uh, I, you know that you can't tell them one thing and then pull in. You know, tell them another thing. Robbie, he out. He's doing the best he can. He's out trying to sell the program to the people and stuff. And then he's getting beat all up because when the people come in here, you know, it's something totally different. And I know he's he's telling them what's on the stinking ordinance that we put up. So I don't understand why it has to change, you know, for, for reimbursement and all of that stuff, you know. So my, that's my piece, and um, good mayor. Yeah, thank you. Uh, on that point uh, would just be uh, that's what we're trying to work through is uh, making sure the work's been done or getting done. And so there's supposed to be communication from OBM, um, you know, OPED, of course, with the individual. And if it if a contractor is being hired, they don't need to expend the funds. We just need to make sure the work's being done in that whole process to make sure it's, uh, you know, cross the T's, dot the I's, because we don't want to grant something, then nothing happens. <coughs> so I, that's I, the, I, that's the challenge. But we are this year is uh, uh, OPEDs going back to rewrite the policies associated with it. So hopefully this February will be a lot smoother uh, process than what it has been this year. I, I, look, you know, Mr. Mayor, you worked hard at it. We 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 put in a lot of effort. All I'm saying is, is like even in that situation where um, a contractor is hired and stuff, you know, we can pay that contractor to do the work and you know or, or whatever. But we have to find a way that this grant can just go out there. I, I'm not, you know, when we did the grant, I I just think, hey, they applied, it's good, they're gonna get the grant. If they don't handle their business, they'll never be able to get you know, funds for the city, and, you know, we take our legal action. So, you know, I, I, I think at some point we, we have to take a, a step with the community. You know, we, we got to take a step with the community. You know, these people are really trying to do some good things, and um, this opportunity is nowhere in the state, you know. And, and you know, so I want to make sure that it, it plays out dividends, you know, for our community to move it forward. I, I don't I, – the reason why we did it like this and put it into, like, business – you know, uh, um, development, housing development. We wanted things that would pay dividends back into the city, back into the communities. It, it, it would, you know, create jobs and revenue and, and taxes. I, you know, we could have said, oh, we're going to give it all to non for profits programs. And then the money's gone, the program's gone, and we're back at the table. But we put it to things, good things that grow our community. Um, people went through a lot to put in these applications. So, you know, I just hope that we continue to work and get these out. Thank you. All right. Anyone else? Alderman McMenamin. Yeah. 
on, on this issue. I wasn't familiar with this, uh, the grant problem that you're describing with the cannabis grant money. As, as I understand what you're saying is um, currently the business plan has to be accomplished and the spending has to take place for the specified purpose. And once we see that, then the city reimburses um, the grant applicant. Is that the way it works now? And, and what you're saying is you'd like the city to give out the money, whether it be $40,000 or $50,000, and then we just hope that that money gets spent for the approved purposes for which it's been allocated. So I understand, you know, there's pluses and minuses to each way of doing it. So maybe, we, you, you know, you can work on a compromise where maybe we can partially release some of the money and, and then see um, that if it's spent in accordance with the application, then, 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 then some more money can be released later. No, I, t I totally agree, and I think that's, that's, so, you know, I got a call from a guy today, put in all his, all his invoices, and when he calls up, he's told, well, we got to do a reimbursement. How can he go start his business and put $40,000 or $20,000 to get half of his, his, his equipment if we, if, if he don't have no money? That's why he put in for the grant, so we should be, uh, Budget Director McCarty, I don't want to keep relaying a point. Oh, Alderman, we completely understand the frustration and I will tell you this being a new program there has undoubtedly been hiccups with it for sure and we've been working through those we've had meetings with everybody together we've really accomplished a lot in refining the program and to your point one of the newest things that we started doing I did you brought up Popeye so I'll use that as an example I had a very nice conversation with Mary last week and we worked some of the issues out uh, her their particular issue is exactly what you said it's we have to be responsible and make sure that the work is done, which is why it's set up as a reimbursement, because you really, you have to be real careful. You don't want to just hand somebody money and then everybody gets in trouble later when it doesn't get spent the way it is. So what we worked out is similar to what Alderman McMiniman just talked about and, and what we're doing with Mary is, I told her, I said, well, here's what we're going to do. I said, bring in your quotes and then just request a down payment. Have that turn that in as an invoice, and we will go ahead and pay a down payment up front. We won't pay the whole invoice, right. but we will do a down payment, which has been enough, and we've done it with some other contractors, to be sufficient for them to go ahead and do the work. That assures them that the city is going to stand behind it and is going to make that total payment in the end. There's been a situation where there was a roofer, and I think it was the barber shop, if I'm not mistaken, who was concerned about that. In lieu of a down payment, they accepted a letter from, from me in my office guarantee that the payment would be made if the work is done once they submitted invoice. Okay. The work was done, uh, they accepted the letter, the work was done, they submitted the invoice, the, uh, the barbershop was reimbursed who then paid for the roofing. So we are working through these things. Uh, we're working with some of these businesses on a case-by-case -case basis okay. to make sure that we can do whatever works best for them. But what we cannot do is give somebody the entire grant up Front before the work is done we, we simply that would be irresponsible but we we do understand your frustrations and we are working through ways to make it happen and I think this down payment system is, is going to satisfy a lot of people and get it done all right thank you I, I think that's a great idea I know you talked talk to me about that before and I respect that but I'm saying somewhere along this system somebody doesn't know that that's the process and that's what gets my little right. butt in a sling I can't take much more butt chewing all right, so that's all I'm saying. I'm trying to get these <laughs> things. Good job. Thank you. <clears throat> All the men. Red path. <laughs> Sorry. So there's a reason this process is this way, and that there's a history uh, that goes way back, not just the mayor's administration, all the way back to the first administration that money went out and the work didn't get done. And so this is, has to go this way. I'm glad that, the, we're, that OBM is working to try to come up with a compromise to, to give assurances to contractors that they're going to get the money if they do it because that's the proper way to do these things. But there is a history, and that's the reason this is the way it is. So that's, it's, it's not specifically targeted to anyone. It's just we have to do this to make sure we protect the money and protect the city. Thanks. Appreciate you. Any other new business? Oh, uh, Mayor. Just a couple of announcements. Uh, Wednesday, there's the Ward 7 uh, Ward Plan meeting at Parkway Christian Church of Veterans at 5 o'clock. And then uh, tomorrow, there's the state senators, I think, and House reps being sworn in at noon. Is that correct? Uh, uh, just, I'm not sure of the time. Yeah, senators are at the old state capitol, and then uh, the House reps are at the uh, UIS. And then Monday is the Martin Luther King 
breakfast at 8.30 at uh, the Wyndham by Frontiers International, and then um, the city's closed on Monday as well. All right, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Anyone else, anyone else? Uh, is there, are there uh, any citizens uh, requested to speak to the committee tonight? No one has signed up, Mr. Chair. All right, thank you. Anyone in the crowd? All right, any executive session, Mr. Zirkel? No, sir. All right. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. Third. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Yeah. It goes so fast, so it's hard to concentrate. You're getting better. You're getting better every time. You do a good job. Yeah.